Hello everyone, welcome back to Bits and Bob's Divination. My name is Caitlin and today we're going to be looking into how you can expect the unexpected energies, influx transformations, and shifts on their way in for you. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so welcome back, my beautiful kindred spirits, and into this mysterious reading as we are going to be looking into three different piles here as always, but each of them are very uniquely different, yet very impactful readings um, about unexpected shifts and changes on their way in for you. And right now we are going through eclipse season. We've just had a lunar eclipse recently. We're also through a very influx season that comes through with Scorpio um, season right now and moving into both in both hemispheres a new uh, season on its way in with both some summer and winter so with all of that combined we have a lot of intuitive hits that we're trying to keep um, in mind and try to keep in touch with and sometimes it's just really hard around this time of year and it's hard to keep um, your toes on that energy as it continues to shift and change. So with that in mind, we're going to be looking into that with these three different piles today um, and very unique piles they are. But before we start looking at these three piles, I do want to invite you to check out the different ways you can support this space if you'd like to. Um, I have lots of helpful reviews and more information on all of these on my Instagram, but I have Snamo readings open right now for the holiday season. So if you would like to get a reading yourself or send a reading to a friend, do feel free to contact me and let me know what question or query is on your mind as I would love to answer that and send a letter to you typewritten on a vintage typewriter and um, flourished for you for a very treasured reading for you or a friend um, in the mail. And I also make handmade spell and ritual paper that you can look into as well for the different seasons and sabbats. So do feel free to check all of the information on that out down below. But we're going to go ahead and look at these piles. Alright, so for the three different piles we have here, I have just one singular crystal for each to keep it very simple for how influx this energy is. Um, so here we have a piece of raw carnelian. It's very rugged and rough, yet very beautiful, feels like a flame. So that is pile number one. Here for pile number two, we have a cube of obsidian in this black color. So that is pile number two. And then last but not least for pile number three, we have this very mysterious, um, as I don't actually know what crystal it is, but this, this mysterious forest green crystal is what I'm going to call it, or murky green crystal. Um, so that is pile number three. So before you start heading off to the timestamps, I'd like to invite you to take a deep and cleansing breath here with me. So let's go ahead and do that here now. And as always, there's no right or wrong way to choose your piles here. You can choose from all three of the piles. You can choose one pile or two piles. You can flip-flop and change your mind. There really is no right or wrong way. As long as you get something out of the reading, that's most important. Um, all of the information down below for timestamps will be down there in the description alongside the chapter marks of this video. And as I mentioned earlier, if you'd like to support this space, do feel free to check out all of the information on that down below for snail mail readings, magical spell and ritual papers, and also um, the kindred tip jar and Instagram community that I run. So do feel free to check all of that out down below. And we're going to go ahead and get started here with pile number one. Hello group one. If you've decided to choose this piece of raw carnelian, then this is the pile for you. I'm going to set it down so you can see it during your reading today as we are going to be using the charm, several different oracle decks. We're actually going to be using the Lenormand deck as a Lenormand deck today. And uh, we're also going to be using the line strider tarot. So today is about looking into what it is that our intuition maybe hasn't been picking up on and what it is that maybe you have been picking up on and some of this might be things that you were expecting so you might have been expecting some of the things that we have showing up here and that probably just means that 
you've been listening to the signs and signals that spirit's been giving you that you've been um, kind of noticing changing and transforming within yourself right now is a very pivotal time of year we're going through scorpio season so there's a lot of shifts and changes a lot of uncertainty um, and then also just in general for the northern hemisphere we're heading into winter which also creates um, this big pivotal shift and then on lo alongside it we have eclipse season which also opens a lot of things with the lunar eclipse happening just recently so with all of that in mind it also can make it harder for us to see those signals see those signs really connect with our intuition and so i'm hoping here today that we can play around with these cards together co-create this reading together um, and see what comes in for you. So uh, these cards specifically have a lot of like ink blots and things like that that you could take your time and pause if you'd like to to really read into and take your time with um, as this is going to be like I said very much a co-creation um, message for you. So listening to your own intuition and signs and signals that are very personal to you and taking your time with those. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and just get right into it. So feel free to get settled and send your energy in through time and space. And let's go ahead and see what you have coming in. What is unexpected transformation, shifts, changes, or just energy that is fluttering in for you, maybe in an unexpected way? Um, so here, first off, we have the Three of Pentacles. And um, this card did fly out while I was just shuffling to sometimes at the beginning before I do your guys' readings. I just sort of make sure that everything is working and is aligned and, you know, the deck doesn't need cleansed or anything like that. And this one kept popping out, so I had a feeling it would come out. Um, alongside it, we also have the Wheel of Fortune, which is also funny because this one uh, came out at a different time. So these ones definitely had something to say, and they're making sure to say it here with your guys' pile, so I think that's really interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and see what else there is. So there definitely is some aligned energy coming in here um, and or uh, spirit just picking the cards out right for us. So let's see what else there is. We also have the devil showing up here. All right, so we've got a few different energies, right? So the three of pentacles, let's talk about that first and how it relates to the wheel of fortune here because as I mentioned earlier, these really felt significant in the fact that you have two crows showing up here and then you have two birds up here that have a similar sort of corvid energy um, to crows and so when I'm looking at these two cards they do feel connected in some way and the idea that the three of pentacles showcases the energy of teamwork of collaboration of collaborations um that are usually in this case right ones that maybe you weren't expecting or if you have been expecting a collaboration if you've been ready to work with someone new and work um, someone new that you are going to uh, get to be co-workers with or maybe it's just like you're moving in with someone and there's a teamwork there aspect of some sort of integration of minds uh, coming together in the wheel of fortune showcasing an ending so it either is that if you've been feeling and getting these signals that like this maybe isn't the best, um, this isn't going to be a very useful or helpful teamwork situation, then it could just be that it's a natural ending and the idea that you knew that that wasn't going to work. But in an unexpected way, it could be that it's just ending something from a previous um, tie that you had to someone, a previous um, person in your life who wasn't very useful to you. So it could be that you're, you're maybe... What I'm getting is basically I feel like you might be heading onto a path where you're going to be connecting with someone, whether that's through a relationship, whether that's coworkers, whether it's much more personal than that, a new friendship, um, that you're moving into that and it's making you have to contemplate, ruminate, or um, rehash up a, a previous relationship, whether just in your mind or personally actually meeting up with someone but it feels like there are some loose ends that haven't been fully addressed because we also have the devil here and the devil is probably this person who you haven't um you know made amends with uh had a, a conversation about this ending with or there's just some loose ends that need to be tied up um versus being having you two tied up in them so there's something about that coming in and maybe that being unexpected and the idea that you weren't expecting them to come back into your life or you haven't thought about this person in a very long time 
but it's coming up because maybe you're moving into a more healthy phase in your life and that's making you have to rehash up and and look back at some of those past things. Sometimes that can bring up some um, feelings of like being an imposter in a relationship now because, you know, you weren't great before and have I grown enough and that can make you even contemplate and ruminate even more. So these are things to just keep in mind. And like I said, do feel free to take your time and look at these cards even more um, with the ink and the way that the colors are moving in different symbols and things that might be very personal and specific to you and the signs and signals you've been getting from spirit through whether that's through god goddesses um goddesses if you've been getting through your spirit team your higher self or just in general like fun spontaneous interesting things and events that you're realizing have um an impact in this situation so with that in mind, let's go ahead and look at the Lenormand cards. So usually with the this uh, Celtic Lenormand deck, I tend to use them more as an oracle deck here on the channel. But today I thought it'd be really fun, especially since we're kind of co-creating this as we go and you're going to maybe take some time, possibly if you'd like to, to seek out more answers and things through the imagery. Um, I thought it'd be fun to do it very similarly with Lenormand, as Lenormand works different to tarot in that it tends to tell us a story. We could pull three cards here, and it's going to give. I'm going to give you different um, main themes to each of those cards, and that's going to give you a story. It's going to give you a sentence. It's going to give you something to um, kind of align everything with, and this will make more sense as we go. But whatever we hash up with these three cards is going to give you a little bit more advice, a little bit more guidance to know where this story is headed um, with these transformations and whether they're ones that you want to follow or maybe ones that are more of a cautionary tale. So let's see what those three cards are coming in for you. What is our first part in the sentence of this new story coming in from this transformational shift? So first off, we have um, the tree, and this is specifically the tree that showcases uh, the winter or um, of things sort of at a standstill almost is what I get. That's like the word that's coming up for me is stagnated growth, a standstill, um, or growing where you where others might think is unexpected, but actually is something that would be more useful to you, right? Some people really bloom and do great in the winter, and maybe that's you. So when I'm looking at this card, it's just either unexpected growth. That's one of the key words that I think of. Um, I would also see it as uh, stagnation or feeling at some sort of standstill or halt. So you might see this differently. So if you have a word, do feel free to jot it down or a couple of words. And we're going to see what the next word in the sentence would be or the next chain of words. So what else is coming in within this story? What else is coming in within group one's story here? Group one. Do feel free to send your energy in. Okay, so we also have the anchor here. Um, the anchor can represent stability. It can rep represent also stagnation and the idea that you're kind of stuck, um, especially since it's on land. And it can also showcase safety as well, you know, coming home, uh, coming home of sorts. So you can seek out different ones that maybe are coming through for you. It could be strength. It could be... Um, feeling like maybe you don't want to budge on something, but there is something happening there uh, within the idea of stagnation continuing here in the story. So let's see if there's any people, places, or other things showing up here for you in this uncertain story. And what we don't know here. Okay, all right, so... What you have showing up here is the number one, and in case the numbers have been showing up for you as well, we have five, 35, and one, as well as nine, seven, and nine. So here we have the writer. The writer has a lot to do with transporting information or goods somewhere. Um, they represent a messenger, a bard. They represent speaking truth. Um, it also can be very quick messages coming in so not like letters or things like that it can be representing um very quick text messages um it could be very quick energy in terms of like 
when you're communicating, it might feel very um, snappy or snap judgments in some way. Uh, so that's what I'm getting here. So when you maybe are reconnecting with this person, if you decide to, if this is an unexpected change that comes in and they call you up and they're like, hey, maybe we should talk or maybe you want to initiate that, this might be what comes of it. And there's a lot to showcase a stagnation landing you in more stagnation or a standstill of some sorts or feeling like you can't budge on a situation and creating very clipped and very quick conversation. So what I'm getting here is rehashing it maybe isn't the best idea. Maybe rehashing it in your mind might be useful or coming to a conclusion for yourself, but rehashing it physically with someone, talking to them on the phone or something like that may not be the right time. But again, you might have come up with a very different sentence here. And if that is what is calling out to you, if you have different words showing up here for you, then do listen to those. I think that's always most important when I'm doing these readings is these readings are inert unless you um, make the meaning come through for you, right? Unless you decide to use this as a tool. Otherwise, it just sort of is information, but it doesn't mean it goes anywhere. So do feel free to use this to inform your decisions, to better connect or disconnect with people. Uh, but that's what I'm getting here for you, group one, with your sentence with Lenormand. But let's go ahead and pull you an advice card now, moving forward. Um, so this is the Prairie Majesty Oracle, and it usually has really great advice in terms of, like, working on yourself. So outside of this entire situation, what is something that you could either bring to the situation or something within yourself that is going to be an unexpected characteristic um, trait that maybe you had forgotten about yourself or you're going to be reigniting in this transformative time. So let's see here. Group one, what do you have coming in? All right, we've got way too many, but I do think it is this one. So interestingly, you got the striped skunk. So a lot of people obviously wouldn't want a characteristic of being called a skunk, but in this case, it's really a great thing because you have clear as their main word. And it also says here, what kind of release would protect clarity in my space? And it feels like there are people that are trying to weed back into your life, bleed back into your life, kind of come back into your life in some way to take away this healthy new teamwork and or collaboration or relationship that you're trying to build upon and these loose ends are kind of just coming back in and it's time to snip some of those up or make decisions about them something needs to be um, decided there uh, whether that is to leave it and put it in a drawer and not talk about it for a long time whether that's to confront it with someone or whether that is to maybe even just clear the air in some other way but that is what's coming up here for you and that you're going to be learning how to better place boundaries with others and also learn how to clear the air and clear your space and protect what is sacred to you um, and also release what would know these loose ends that no longer serve you so that's what we have showing up here with the striped skunk Again, there's energy that you can read into here as well in terms of um, the different flowers and fauna and other things that might be showing up here for you intuitively. We also have the um, two alchemical signs of the elements that are showcased here with both fire and water. So that might give you a little bit more as well. Um, those are like polar opposites. So that might also be showcasing more to the story. So this is what we have so far. And it's always unexpected to see what shows up here. Sometimes it's just a bunch of information that doesn't fully give you an answer. Um, so we're going to end this reading with the charms and seek out any last minute little details that are showing up here for you. Uh, but if you have enjoyed this reading so far or if you found something useful out of it, do be sure to give this video a like. It really does help the channel so much. So thank you to everyone who has. And yeah, let's go ahead and start stirring these up. So feel free to send your energy in here, group one, and let's see what's coming up unexpectedly for you. Okay, so a few different ones. Let's see here. 
So interestingly, over here on the moon, which is the action moon um, of the first quarter moon, you have the fall in love charm. So this used to say falling in love. It also can represent um, like the fall season and the season of fall as well, but it does feel like you've really clipped yourself into something. You're feeling very connected to someone right now or you're falling back in love to a project, a person, or a place um, even like I said, how in relation to this teamwork is pro probably why this new action is coming in. Or just in general, you know, falling in love with something might be on their way in as well in an unexpected way. Um, there also is the dolphin charm showing up here over on the uh, loose ends that you're tying up. And the dolphin here uh, represents a lot to do with community. It has a lot to do with collaboration. Dolphins love to communicate and they have that connection to that water element again. So again, a very emotional tie is ready to be cut or ready to be rehashed up or however it is that you want to take action moving forward. Um, there is something here showcasing that that loose end is at least going to be on your mind and is something that you are going to have to play and experiment with at this time and maybe even add a little bit of more humor and play and light fun to the situation might be more helpful as well as they can be very um, playful creatures. More to do with that sharp uh, conversation that we were talking about earlier where I felt like the conversation and messages may feel very sharp, very quick, very, um, right, like, like they feel very snappy, you know what I mean? Like where you're like someone just ends with, okay, and then they move on. Like it's that kind of conversation. It doesn't, it just feels very like cut off and you have that showed up again here with the sharp point charm which feels sharp and to the point um, so that's showing up here as well to give you more information on this and then alongside that here with the devil charm and also the um the tree here you have the rock and the rock usually showcases something like again a rock at the bottom of your shoe it showcases stability um, it can showcase also this is personally a signifier for my father um, so this can also represent your parents or parental figures maybe and that's who you are rehashing things with um, or something along those lines it doesn't have to be the whole person but a situation even can be what is being rehashed um, and it really feels like they're not budging um, is what I'm really getting because we have a lot to show here. A wintry, not budging, very um, stuck in the ground kind of feeling, especially since we even have this anchor stuck in the rocks. Um, and so it's like your boat's trying to leave, but it's stuck in the anchor. So what I see most from your cards and your charms here is just to, one, make your own decision if you want to reach out to these people and rehash something that needs a little bit of closure or a tied end that's still loose. Um, maybe keeping it light, uh, being aware that they might be a little bit quick with their messaging and that it might take several conversations with them before they you can actually get to your point. But what you are building right now with someone, a new friendship, a new relationship, um, a new situation that uh, maybe doesn't align with this person, whatever it might be there that you're collaborating and growing and, and trying to build seems is very healthy. It's just these past things that are still kind of clawing onto you and trying to kind of um, hold you back from moving forward. So those are all of your charms and cards here today. I hope this reading was useful to you in some way. It's always a mixed bag with readings like this, right? I'm also not sure what to expect. So I hope this was used useful to you. And if it was, do be sure to give this video a like and let me know in the comments down below. I'm always curious to see what you saw in the cards, what you maybe made with um, the different signs and signals that are coming in and even maybe the sentence with Lenormand. I would love to hear. Also, do feel free to subscribe to the channel as well as I put out new videos every single Monday for pick a card readings. And hopefully next week, I'm actually going to be putting out something that's going to be um, either a tarot tag or possibly something a little 
little bit more personal um, with my own pra- practice, both with tarot and art magic. So do feel free to check that out. Um, otherwise, it'll be another pick a card. Depends on, on time constraints. And also, if you'd like to support this channel through the holiday season, do be sure to check out the Kindred tip jar down below. It all goes back into the channel. You can also check out the snail mail readings that I do where I send a letter to you in the mail. They're typewritten on a vintage typewriter. Um, it would be really fun to do them during the holiday season and to receive them during this time. And you can also uh, gift those out if that's something you're interested in. Just be sure to let me know. And you can also check out the different other offerings that I provide as well for magical spell and ritual papers. So all of the information on that will be down below. And I hope this reading was useful to you. I'm wishing the best for all of the different changes and beautiful mo- um, movement that you have going forward. And yeah, I do believe that is everything. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, group two. If you decide to choose this piece of cubed obsidian, then this is the pile for you. I'm going to go ahead and set it down here so you can see it during your reading here today as we are going to be using the charms as well as several different oracle decks, a Lenormand deck, which we're actually going to be using more in a Lenormand style here today. And we're also using the tarot deck of choice with uh, the Lenormand, or sorry, the Line Strider tarot. So, this is going to be a very intuitive based reading um, in the idea that whenever we're looking at unexpected shifts and changes, um, a lot of us sometimes actually get sort of tips and uh, signals coming in from spirit. So some of you might find that these aren't very unexpected because maybe you've been catching on to those signals, you've been noting, noticing and noting down the different synchronicities that are coming in, um, and possibly just noticing all of those different intuitive hits. But others, maybe, you know, life is busy, we haven't noticed, or they've just sort of somehow kind of moved through our register and we haven't noticed. Uh, so this is going to be a very intuitive reading. We're going to be playing around with the cards and maybe we aren't even going to get a conclusion about anything. Um, it's going to be very unexpected even for me. So let's just go ahead and dive right in, right? So since this is such an intuitive reading, um, I decided to use the Line Strider Tarot because it does have a lot of these beautiful ink blots um, and these intuitive hits for you to really look into and scry on. So feel free to take your time to pause on each of the cards and see what personal messages are being created for you um, and shown to you and really listen to those. I always think that's super important um, to use your own discretion, your own um signs and signals coming through to inform you on the reading uh, versus just only taking my word, especially since this is a collective reading. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and just get started. So feel free to send your energy in through time and space and get settled. And we're going to look into three cards to showcase the very transformative energy that's coming through because right now not only is... Um, it just I just felt really called to this reading, but also we're we've just had a lunar eclipse, which is a really big portal for transformation. We're going through the most transformative sign of Scorpio right now. And also here in the northern hemisphere, moving into a big shift as we head towards the colder weather of winter. So there's a lot of big shifts happening that um, sometimes just don't add up. And so this is gonna give us maybe a little bit more information here. So let's see. Group to here, what unexpected shifts, changes, transformations, or just generally unexpected energy is coming through for group two here. Ooh, interesting. So let's see what bounced out. So I'm going to take just this top card here. So we have the nine of pentacles, but in case the five of cups or any of these other cards come up later, we'll keep that in mind. Uh, but we do have the nine of pentacles showing up here, which I do think is interesting because um, the card previous to it was an owl. Uh, so we're going to see if any more of that wise energy is maybe coming through as well. So group two, group two, do feel free to send your energy in. So we can pinpoint it a little bit more here. Lots of pink. Um, let's see. One more card. One more card. Okay, you've got a lot of cards flopping out all over the place. 
So there could just be more of that unexpected chaotic energy to this. So interestingly, you also had the Two of Cups show up again in case you wanted to see these other cards. Um, here they are. But the ones that the one that called out to me on the top here was the Two of Cups. So yeah, I will go ahead and pick these up so you can really see them up close. Um, and feel free to scry and take your time with each of them. But there is this really uh, pale pink to really deep pink and purples and sort of an energy along that side. And also a lot of cup energy located or um, in combination with pentacles, which is kind of manifesting something into reality, especially with the nine of pentacles, which is about manifesting something and working hard towards something to finally reap the rewards of it. And so what I'm getting here is um, quite an energy that you've been trying to manifest something forward that is related to this two of cups. And the two of cups usually represents for a lot of people romance, um, rekindling a, a friendship or any basically any relationship that you feel like you're rekindling or getting closer with it could be platonic it could be romantic it could be through dating it can be even just in a, a marriage that you've been in for a very long time and you're rekindling things and and seeing things from a new perspective but there just feels like there's this closeness and a rekindling of sorts showing up here with the two of cups and the nine of pentacles does showcase um both an energy of trying to manifest something forward um and again we had that owl showing up here so it also can be that you're you've really been listening to to what you've been trying to get here because owls are very precise listeners they're very good at listening and hearing things out that's why they they are known for being so wise um, nothing gets past them sort of energy so I feel like when it comes to unexpected energy it may be that you've been trying to manifest something forward but you didn't realize it was this um, so maybe that's what's unexpected about it that you weren't trying to rekindle a relationship um, you weren't maybe after that in any way but somehow it still happened through this process of whatever you were trying to manifest this could have been something in career it could have been something else that you idealistically were hoping to manifest forward a dream even as the ten of cups can represent a dream a fantasy a a reaching for something that seemed con entirely impossible and yet still found its way to you so if you've been trying to manifest something that felt impossible that seems to be something that maybe you've already been getting hints on been listening to signs for been trying to go after the opportunities and make that happen but through it you also are possibly creating a new opportunity for you that seemed very unexpected and that is rekindling a romance a friendship a um, relationship either even from the past um, but something's coming through with rekindling there and it also the ten of cups does showcase an idealistic family in many ways um, a connection in that way so it can also be that through this you're also creating a really deep connection with someone that is either related to family or could one day be a part of your family but it does seem very big um, uh, just looking at these cards it feels very long term as well the nine of pentacles does represent something that's very long term based so you might be gaining a new long term friend or a long term can't rekindling with someone um, in a very stable way um, so yeah, that's what I'm getting so far from your cards, but we're going to go ahead and do something fun with Lenormand here today. And that I usually just pull these in a more oracle based card by card sort of format, but Lenormand tends to work in a very different way. So usually you'd pull three or more cards and you'd read them like a sentence. So this would be the first word, second word, third word as you read them. And you'd actually read them in a more quick way than the intuitive side of tarot. So we're going to do that here today for you to see if you continue to try to manifest these things and how these opportunities might come in. We're going to see a sentence that comes in here that maybe gives us a little bit more context to the story that is building here. So do feel free to send your energy in and I'll talk a little bit more about this process once we get our three cards. So let's see, what are what is the first word or part of a phrase Coming in here for group two. Group two. Okay. 
interesting. You have the chickens. Uh, <laughs> the immediate thing I got was Bok Bok, which just sounds like humor. Um, I'm getting a lot of humor from this card. It makes me want to giggle. Um, we also have the Seven of Pentacles and the number 12, in case that resonates for anything. Seven of Pentacles with the Nine of Pentacles does showcase something almost on its way. Like, um, it's you know, we're moving from the seven to the eight to the nine. It's, it's getting there. Um, and then the 12, having that 12 dozen sort of feeling um, alongside that family and an egg sort of idea. Again, it's really making me feel giggly for whatever reason. So I'm getting humor, laughter, giggles from that card. But let's pull all three before I explain further here. So let's see, group three or sorry, group two. Um, we also have the number 23 showing up here with another seven, the seven of um, uh, wands here alongside the mice. And the mice represent something very different. They feel much more um, mischievous. Uh, they also are usually trying to gain something. Um, so there is this feeling of charm, humor, conversation that comes through from chickens. That's usually those main words. So if we were trying to build a phrase here, so far we have humor, laughter, um, someone making you laugh because they're very charming, but they might have an alternative mod motive, an ulterior motive, and that might be something that's coming in in the more ex unexpected way. So that's something to keep in mind if this person that you are talking to has an alternative um, ulterior motive, uh, or if other people are trying to kind of plague your mind with that idea, and it's much more lighthearted than that. We're going to see the last section of this word story or phrase. And like I said, this is a very co-created reading. So if you see the chickens and you feel something entirely different, do listen to that sign. Do listen to that signal. Same with the mice. And maybe you're going to build a very different sentence. And I think that's completely valid and important to listen to. So lastly here you have the number 28. This is with a person who has more of a mask energy. They are um, also having the ace of, of cups here. The ace of cups representing a new usually romantic or friendship or a new opportunity in a very emotional way with someone. So that's definitely showing up here. They're a very hardworking person. This represents a hardworking character in your story, a hardworking person, and someone who is is usually usually doesn't have an alternative mo ulterior motive. They typically just want to get things done. They want to do it in a very um, loyal and respectable way. So that's what I'm really getting here is that you have someone who you're currently com having a conversation with who maybe is very charming and humorous and you're maybe worried they have an alternative motive, ulterior motive, or are trying to you know, a gold digger kind of energy or, or trying to, I don't know, do something to gain something from this relationship that isn't what you expected. And then um, the character in the story that this is building up to is someone who is a very loyal, very respectable, and very hardworking person. Again, that doesn't mean they don't have one, but it is showcasing more energy that they're more trustworthy worthy than you maybe think. So if you've been worried there that you can't maybe share everything with them because you're not sure about them yet, take your time to get to know them. Like I said, this is unexpected energy. This is very influx energy. So taking your time with them is probably the best motive here. Um, but like I said, you might be getting a very different picture. So do listen to that. And we're going to go ahead and move on to your final card here of a Prairie Majesty Oracle advice card. And these, I, I think if we're going to look, think about it as a story, what is a unexpected trait or um, sort of character development for you um, that is going to be guiding you forward, moving forward? So basically, like, what are you growing? How are you getting character growth right now? So what is the character growth coming in for group two? What characteristic is growing, evolving, changing, or shifting right now for group two? Okay, am I ready to be seen? The bald eagle soar. Okay, this is giving us more of a picture of maybe where this uncertainty and um, 
scared, like a little scared mouse kind of energy is coming through because whenever we see the um, bald eagle here, they are showing like their chest openly and fully. They are spreading their wings and showcasing everything because they trust the people that they're around. They want to soar with the person that they're around or with and they want to be seen as their full person. Um, so that's a very vulnerable, scary thing to do, right? Nobody wants to walk up to someone they've never met and just like bear it all, right? So this is going to be something that takes time, takes a lot of trust building and respect building um, and boundary building with someone. But it does seem that you are building it with someone who, who could be that person or is already that person. Like I said, you might be rekindling something and that requires, you know, even if we've been in a relationship with someone doesn't mean we aren't growing and changing and transforming that there are things that like maybe a new hobby you want to start on and that means you have to again sort of rehash and reopen yourself up to this person and show your true colors a little bit more again and have to be fully open again and so that that's a constant process that will happen within a relationship within a friendship within a with whatever relationship that you feel like this is rekindling we're constantly in a state of closing ourselves and opening ourselves and closing ourselves and opening ourselves because we're we're not going to be the same character we were in chapter one versus chapter 99, right? There's so much that changes and so many reasons why we change, but sometimes that change isn't evident from the outside and we have to let someone know and communicate it. Um, so maybe you're going to do that in a more humorous, funny, silly way, maybe a self-deprecating way, whatever makes it easier for you. But it does seem that they are, they have an ear to listen. So that's what I have showing up here so far for your cards. But let's go ahead and finish off your reading here with the charms to give us those last little details. Um, but if you have enjoyed this reading or have found something useful in it or unexpected, do be sure to give this video a like. I really do appreciate it. It helps the channel so much. Um, also, feel free to subscribe if you'd like. But we're going to go ahead and pull you these charms. So let's do that here, group three. Okay, so we only have a few. Um, let's go ahead and zoom you in. So like I said, we only have a few that are showing up here. Um, interesting, you have the parrot charm showing up here in the middle, kind of a around this entire situation of opening up but not feeling maybe ready to open up or if they have a, a different motive than you're expecting. We have the parrot charm. Whenever I see the parrot, it makes me think of... Um, uh, for whatever reason, I'm getting, like, an image of Jafar, like, you feel like they're, they, like, Jafar from, um, like, the Disney movie, um, it makes me think that, like, you're worried that they, again, have that alternative motive or, or ulterior, ulterior motive, I'm having a hard time saying that today, um, or that they're parroting something, saying something that isn't, you know, that they don't truly believe, but they just want you to like them or something like that. It can be something that's not coming from a bad place, but, you know, maybe they're not, they're just trying to fit in with you or trying to comfort you in some way by kind of molding themselves to, or maybe you're molding yourself to impress them. So that's coming through here with the parrot is just the idea of like, are you speaking your original words? Are they speaking their original words? And is it coming from a more vulnerable open space or is it coming from a I want to make you like me space? So that's just something to keep in mind. You also have the faith charm showing up here with the chickens. Uh, it's away from the mice, so it's much more around the chickens, the communication that's happening here with this person. Um, and you have the faith charm. So this can represent that maybe you're going to be communicating with them and maybe you connect with them through faith, through spirituality, through something like that. Or it's just having faith in them and, and taking that leap of faith. So that's showing up here. And then lastly here you have the... Um, kind of it's kind of gotten a little bit grubby and dirty here now but it used to be this pink paper clip and whenever I think of paper clips they represent a short journey with someone or a transition with someone it makes me think just like a paper clip is like it's a temporary hold um so I feel like you feel like this is a temporary hold with someone and that's maybe where your mindset is right now 
um, and it sh- it fell by am I ready to be seen so are you ready to be seen or are you not and that might be even the answer to that might be unexpected as well so those are all of the cards and charms here I'll go ahead and zoom you out so you can see a little bit better uh, but if you did enjoy this reading like I mentioned earlier do be sure to give this video a like and also if you would like to you can comment down below I'd love to hear if you made a different sentence if you saw different things I always find that super interesting and fascinating and to see how our intuition can co-create these readings together you can also subscribe to the channel as I mentioned earlier as I put out new videos every single Monday and each of those videos are either pick a card readings or other readings around art magic and tarot and uh, charm casting. I just did an entire like hour-long video on a master video on how to charm cast so if that's something that interests you do be sure to subscribe. And also as we head into the holiday season if you're interested in um helping to shop small and to support this space, do be sure to check out the Kindred Tip Jar down below alongside the snail mail readings that I provide. Um, these readings are for any query or question that's on your mind and really expands the reading and I send that reading to you typed up on a vintage typewriter for you to enjoy and treasure. I know many have said in their reviews that they, and they've even told me in DMs and things even a year later, um, that they're still getting little information from those readings uh, when they revisit them. So if that's something you're interested in, if that's something that would be really useful, helpful, or um, inspires you in some way, do be sure to check all of that out down below. I also provide other offerings for spell and magical handmade papers and things like that so all of the information on all the offerings are down below as well as on my instagram community which you're welcome to join all of the fun magic over there and yeah i do believe that is everything i hope you got something out of this and um it's always unexpected to see what comes through but i hope that you did enjoy um and we will see you hopefully in the next one bye Hello group three, if you've decided to choose this mysterious green crystal, then this is the pile for you. I'm going to go ahead and set it down right here so you can see it during your reading here today. As we are going to be using the charms, several different oracle decks, we're also going to be using the Lenormand deck here, which I typically use in a more um, oracle style, but with today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, so do stay tuned for that. And we're also going to be using the Line Strider Tarot, as this tarot deck has um, a really great energy energy for looking into unexpected changes and shifts and transformations on the way their way in because it does have this like ink blotty intuitive energy to it so I really do um, hope you get something out of this reading in the idea that not only am I going to do the reading for you to really look into but also I hope that you are able to really intuitively co-create this reading with me as whenever we're looking into unexpected energies they are in flux they are open-ended they sometimes we get really weird stuff going on in these types of readings that don't always make sense um, so this is an opportunity for you to piece together those symbols and the things that are coming through for you intuitively um, to really piece together what is coming through for you and and if you find that a lot of this isn't unexpected for you, if you already felt this energy coming in, then that just means you've really been listening to your intuition, which is a really great thing as well. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and start first with the tarot cards. And um, you can go ahead and feel free to get settled and everything. Uh, but I do want to just mention that another reason why I think it's a great time to look into these energies is because here in the Northern Hemisphere, we're not only moving into winter and big shifts and changes in weather and seasons, but also we just had a lunar eclipse and we're also... Um, in Scorpio season, which is very much that change um, and transformation energy. It always makes me think for whatever reason of like um, a phoenix being reborn from the ashes. Um, or currently going into the ashes to then re be, be reborn in spring. So there's this really influx energy and I hope that we can follow it here with the cards. So let's go ahead and see what's coming in for you, group three. So first we're going to look into three different cards showcasing... And they've been very jumpy today. Uh, showcasing what is coming through for you in this intuitive, very influx world. What's changing in your story, your transformations, the shifts that you maybe are 
unexpectedly finding in your space. So you have both the Fool and the Nine of Wands here. Very different energies. The Fool wants to leap into the abyss and do the unexpected and not know what is around the corner yet go for it anyway and the nine of wands has a very different energy in that it kind of wants to stick to its home stick to what they know stay in control um, and sort of be resilient and, and just keep on going even if the going gets tough so it feels like a change of pace that might be coming in for you but let's see which direction it's going right so let's see group Group three. Goodness, they are so bendy today. I know you guys can't really see or feel that, but <laughs> the energy is very in flux. Okay, so we have the three of cups as well. Interesting. Very different energies. We've got the fool and the nine of wands of this huge, um, like, paradox of energies almost. Uh, and then you have the three of cups, which is a very different energy. The three of cups is kind of a wild card in all of it, or the least wild card, really, in that it represents celebration, um, it represents uh, conversations with those who maybe are different from you, it represents uh, diversity, um, yeah, there's a, there's, it's kind of a wild card. Um, I'm tempted to pull another card, but I don't want to you know what, actually, I do feel like there's one more card, so let's, let's do it. Let's go ahead and pull another one here. See if there's something else. Group three, you are mysterious. Let's see. Okay, so you also have the four of pentacles, which is just really giving us a little bit more um, of sort of an affirmation in all of this, that you're probably in the the nine of wands energy right now because the four of pentacles is very similar to the nine of wands the nine of wands wants to stay in their corner stay where comfort is stay where they've built something um, battle it out till the end they're the captain that goes down on a sinking ship kind of energy and then you have the four of pentacles which represents holding on to your possessions holding on to something very tight um, to your loved ones very tight um, maybe in a controlling way to um, your possessions to hoarding behaviors to um, your thoughts as well, trying to rein them in when they need to kind of take flight. So there is something here that feels like you're trying to rein, control, hold something very tightly. And in doing that, sometimes, you know, the things that we hold very tightly actually end up breaking from just trying to keep them you know, it's like trying to hold an egg really tightly. You're gonna eventually break it. So there is something that's showcasing a need for opening up, diversifying what it is that you currently have in your possession. So whether it is you may be needing to move to a new place, like physically, um, whether it represents, again, hoarding materials, hoarding things in your life, hoarding people or, or ideas and trying to keep everything really tidy and neat and clean and precise, um, perfectionism kind of energy. But there's this opening energy as well on the opposite side here, and that's probably what's in flux. It feels like they're really battling um, because the fool represents wanting to kind of put that all away. They want to jump off the cliff and know that they can fly because they believe it, because they know it, because they have faith in themselves and faith that wherever that they go, they have the capability, that they have the um, understanding and the passion to do whatever it is. So this isn't giving us a lot of like, this represents a relationship, this is your career kind of reading. This is a very much more about your character and where you're going and, and a much more bigger picture energy and that you're kind of ready to take, maybe you're not ready to take flight, but you're being given opportunities and people and places that are calling to you like from an inner gut place that are telling you to take flight to believe in the and trust that you are going in the right place even if it feels like you're falling off a cliff you know what I mean um even if it feels like you have this stable thing why would I ever leave it but there is a reason and maybe you're not looking at it and the three of cups represents also like I said a it usually represents celebrations, conversations with those who um, you're very close with. And so right now is a really great time also if you're feeling like this energy is coming in or maybe you're just now noticing it in, within you. 
that it might be a good time to talk with someone, to just vent about it, just to just get it off your chest. Because right now I feel like you can feel this niggle of energy that's just like, yes, 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 I really want to go there. I really want to do this thing. But no, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And you're constantly you're shutting it down. And maybe gaining a new perspective from someone is really what you need. And you might even just have someone who comes into your life and is... Um, it, can, it doesn't have to be someone new, but just someone in general coming in and being like, hey, do you want to talk about this? And maybe you, that's unexpected as well, that you weren't expecting anyone to, to notice that you were going through this sort of battling energy inside. So I kept feeling really called to the word flux for your pile and the idea that you're very much in flux. Um, you're not fully molded. It's if you've if you've ever worked in like metal smithing things and you're trying to solder th two things together, um, you have to put flux in there to make it work. And so something's in flux. It's not fully solidly together yet. Um, but you're trying to put the pieces together and glue the puzzle together to see the whole piece. And that's what's maybe unexpected is that you're going to have to go through that process. Um, Cause just leaving it behind and sticking it in a drawer in your mind isn't really working. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and move on to the next three cards that we're going to pull from the Lenormand deck. So with this, usually I tend to pull a card, read it like an Oracle deck, and then move on. But today we're going to piece together a, a, a conversation with the cards. Basically, we're going to build a phrase or a story um, and see what comes through. So it's very much traditional Lenormand in that way. So it'll make more sense as we go. So let's go ahead and get started. So three different cards. We're going to look into the first part of the story, the first character, the first person, the first item in the story that is building um, connections with this energy. So if you follow this energy, if you do talk to these people, if you start to lean into this flux energy, what story begins to build? So first off, we have uncertainty and also a battling of black and white and thinking that there's no gray area. That's something that I didn't address, right? You might have a gray area here. Um, so when I look at this card, if we're going to build a story here together, do feel free to look at these clouds and look at this energy and come up with your own story. So I may see the clouds as uncertainty. I see it also as, you know, looking at something as black and white and thinking that there's no gray area in between. You can see it as ascension, descension. You can see it as uplifting your energy or delifting your energy as depends on which cloud you resonate with. Um, there's many different ways to interpret the card. Um, so whatever is feeling the most like that's the right word, then definitely listen to that and we'll build the rest of the story here. So let's see the next card here, what story is being built. And for me personally, for you, I was feeling very called to the idea of uncertainty or that idea of like battling between black and white and forgetting that there's many other colors and shades in between and that you don't have to, to fly off the cliff without also having a plan, right? So let's see, group three, the second word, phrase, person, noun, <laughs> adjective in the story here, group three, we were flying out earlier, now this one's being a bit coy, so we also have the, by the way, the number 630 and two kings, we have the king of spades or the king of swords and the king of wands showing up here, so a lot of, um, mastery energy uh, so anyways here we have in the middle though we have the lily of the valley or the lilies um, which usually represent sometimes sort of a rebellion to grow sort of wildly um, is what I'm getting from this there's this rebellious wild selfish um, but being selfless for yourself kind of energy growing away from the typical community that you're in um, maybe taking flight away from what has always been known. Uh, you're very much in flux here, for sure. Uh, but you might see flowers in a very different way. Maybe you even know a lot of lore about the lily of the valley or the idea of being in a forest, um, maybe giving you comfort even. So see what adjective comes in for you or, or how this plays into your story. And I'll pull the final card here. Group three, group three, what else is coming in here? 
So lastly, you have a character coming in. So we have the little boy, or the, the child rather, um, without any gender here. Um, the number 13 and the jack of uh, spades. The jack of spades showcases less mastery, right? So we have this king energy, like um, what I'm getting is like, again, more of this, like, I know what I'm doing. I know what I've done. I've done this before. I'm not going to fall off that cliff again. I'm not going to listen to that again. I'm not, I'm not even going to, you know, and you're just pushing it away because maybe a part of you got hurt in the past for trying to go after something that you dreamed and wished for. Um, maybe it feels frivolous or, um, you know, unrealistic. And so there is this feeling with the number 13 coming in here, which usually is related to the death card, um, that something that it doesn't have to be a real child, but your inner child, this dream that you're, you've wanting to, to kind of jump off this cliff and just dream with, is just keep, keeps getting cut off and, um, not even listened to, right? It's just sort of silenced all the time um, because it doesn't have enough information. It's it's younger. It doesn't know everything. It doesn't know better. I know better now, right? And so there's this inner critic, inner turmoil that's coming up here. And I think a new perspective would be really useful talking to someone about this. But if I were to create a story here, personally, what I'm seeing is this idea that you are currently very uncertain about very polarizing extreme ideas that are in flux for you that feel very rebellious or out of character for you but have come from a place that you kind of locked up and kind of chained in your inner self that relates to a childhood or very a younger frivolous idea that you've always had so that's what I'm really getting here and so when you start to go down this path this uncertain energy and start to explore this energy this is the story that arises and it doesn't mean that this has to be the story that you stick to but it does mean a lot of growth can come from understanding and learning more about it so that's what I see here, but again, you might have gotten a very different story. Do feel free to let me know in the comments what you came up with. Uh, but we're going to pull the final card here, and then we'll also move on to your charms. But this one is going to be from the Prairie Majesty Oracle, and we're going to pull one card from this. And since we're thinking about stories, a lot of characters in stories and in movies, right, they go from the very beginning, and they get a lot of character development by the end. So what is something throughout this, this flux energy that you're going to grow as a character trait, or you're going to grow in um, through this influx energy? So what is this character growth trait that you're going to gain throughout all of this? So group three, what are you going to gain as a character trait throughout all of this? All right, they keep flipping around, but I'm not feeling it yet. So do feel free to send your energy in. Did you see how that flew out? That was so interesting. Okay, so let me get it here. So you have the moon. The moon shows more of that duality, that black and white energy, yin and yang, um, a swirling of sorts and extremes. It represents extremes. And it also represents reminding yourself no matter what phase you are in for your character growth that you are always whole, right? The moon is always whole. doesn't mean it's always illuminated. It's not always seen all the time. The sun isn't always shining on it in the perfect light to be a full moon all the time. But it is always a whole, um, uh, or not a whole, but you know, like it is always whole. And so what I'm getting here is that you're reminding yourself no matter what extreme you're on, no matter what place, whatever phase you're in, you reminding yourself that you're always whole, that you're always coming from a space that is whole, you're not broken, and that I think a lot of self-worth is going to come through this, a lot of understanding where your needs are. And that there can be a bit of both, that you can follow this dream, but you don't have to be so rebellious. There is some sort of middle ground that's coming through for this character development. And maybe right now that feels very uncertain, it feels very unexpected, it feels very in flux. But by the end of the story, by the end of this character growth piece in your life, this piece of the puzzle, you're going to gain a little bit more perspective on those extremes and where they can meet in the middle and compromise so that is what I'm getting here from your cards from this story from this influx energy which is always sometimes hard to read on because like I said it's very influx so do feel free like I said to let me know what you're seeing so far 
and using your own intuition to co-create this reading with me. But let's go ahead and pull your final messages here with the bits and bobs little charms. If you're interested in charm ca casting, do feel free to check out the master guide that I created on these. Uh, but you can also, if you have found this reading really useful, do be sure to give this video a like as well. It really does help the channel, so thank you. But let's go ahead and finish off with the charms here, group three. Okay, so we got a few different ones here. Interesting, we have a very similar bird to the bird that's showing up here on the Fool card. Um, so we'll look at that first. So I always see this as um, forward movement. It's even showing up here almost in like that same way. And it showed up over here by the clouds in your story. So this does showcase you flying, finding freedom, finding an openness to explore, a playfulness like a bird does, a bird's eye view even of the the idea, maybe that's what you're getting here from the clouds is an idea of a bird's eye view that's coming in as well from all of this and that that's going to give you and gain you a little bit of a new perspective. It's also showcasing that that again bird's eye view might be coming from the little tiny bird. I don't think you can see it unless I pick it up. There's a tiny little bird chilling on the back of, of this goat I believe. Um, so it may be that you are gaining that bird's eye view from a trusted friend or person in your life who maybe you need to talk to about this inner turmoil and flux situation that you're in. Um, alongside that, you also have the hammer charm. The hammer usually represents you having all of the tools, but the hammer was upside down. Um, so it represents, again, that you maybe a lot of the reason why you're not following this um, new opportunity or new path is because you're feeling maybe inadequate, not a master in it, you don't have all of the information yet, and that's making you feel maybe the imposter syndrome, or that you're just not good enough. And the thing is, all of us have to start from somewhere. And so a lot of the reason why we do this is because we compare ourselves to either comparing ourselves to our siblings, comparing ourselves to the greatest person in our field, the top dog, the person who knows everything, but everyone started from somewhere, right? And they had to learn the tools along the path too. And so through experience, you can learn tools as well. Uh, and then you have a whole little clump of charms here that are showing up. So we have the security charm. And this one is actually in the less, I have one in here that represents insecurity. And this one represents feeling secure. And that's showing up next to um, the same energy that we're talking about where you're trying to kind of control everything so that it is giving you a sense of security which isn't always necessarily a bad thing right um, but it can mean that it keeps us in a box uh, alongside that we have the nostalgia charm this can represent childhood for me so you might be seeing that as well and it's clipping you onto this idea that if you keep your inner child secure and clipped down then that's going to give you more security but alongside that, you also have two other charms. And for these, you have the bobby pin charm. Interesting that you have so many that represent like hair related. Maybe that's something specific to you as well. But the bobby pin charm, this one represents a selfless act or wanting to always be selfless in some way, not do the selfish thing of going after something that you really have always wanted to. Um, and this is being shown, again, because you have a selfless act showing up here and maybe the extremity of that, and that maybe there can be a middle ground. And the reason why I see bobby pins as a selfless act, by the way, is because they tend to be something that holds up your hair and keeps it all nice and tidy, yet it's never seen and never takes credit for it. Um, and then you also have the... Uh, the, uh, what do you call these, um, clothespin charm. So whenever I see the clothespin, it also is kind of similar to that and the idea that it's like a tool, um, that you're using. So I think it's just a reminder really on that. I don't, I'm not really getting a ton from that charm, honestly, but it might be very unique and specific to you. So do feel free to look into it further. 
But those are all of the charms and cards here. I'll go ahead and zoom you out so you can see everything a little bit more clearly. Um, but those are all of the charms and cards. I hope you did get something out of this. And if you did, please be sure to give this video a like. And let me know in the comments down below what you saw and what you created with this reading. I'm always super curious. And um, especially with this one because I never know what's going to show up either within any of your readings. But specifically on ones that are so open-ended like this. So... It's very interesting to me to see how um, the readings can connect with you. Uh, but if you have found this reading useful as well, do be sure to subscribe as I put out new videos every single Monday for love, career, spirituality, for that master guide on charm casting and other fun, more educational videos that I hope to do in the future. Uh, so do feel free to subscribe. And you can also check out the different ways in which you can support this space through the holiday season through checking out the Kindred Tip Jar. It all goes right back into the channel. And you can also check out the snail mail readings that I do, which are very treasured readings by those who have gotten them. They're on any question or query that you are interested in learning more and expanding upon. It could be from this reading or another pick a card or just another question that's been on your mind and you're interested to look a little bit further. These readings are typewritten on a vintage typewriter as well, so they're super easy and accessible to everyone and are sent to you in the mail for you to treasure for many years. I know people who have also received these readings who have let me know even a year later that they're still picking up the reading and finding useful information and signs and signals from spirit from it. So if that's something you're interested in, do be sure to check out the information on that below. You can also check out the other offerings I have over there on my Instagram. Um, and my Instagram community where you can see more into not only my offerings but also the fun personal things that I get up to um, within my witchcraft and um, my practice. So do feel free to check all of that out down below and I hope this has given you a little bit more information on what is unexpectedly, expectedly coming in and uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!